Welcome to the adventures of Archdruid Mountain, the Soul Flayer, Child of Destiny, and Reunite, I guess, kind of, of the UK. It was never really united in the first place, so that doesn't work. But we will reunite Celtica, uh, Gaul, whatever the hell you want to call it. I've been looking at some maps, and basically they're, they're kind of varied. Some have uh, Gaul or Celtica or whatever, the Celtic lands, at its extent, basically covering the whole of um, France. Some say, say it goes all the way down, essentially, into uh, the sort of northern provinces of uh, very western Africa here. Some expand all the way into kind of Germania here, all the way. We're just, I think we should draw up our borders at France, uh, modern day France, that is, and leave it at that, because if we look at the digital borders of France in game, kind of a mess. Um, it, I don't know what the hell is going on, but the Aztecs have bought with them a load of Bedouins from, uh, from Al Andalus, and basically they've managed to start converting all the provinces, and they've become landed. It's, it's gone very strange. Either way, let's. I guess, uh, liberate? Is that the right word? I don't think it's really liberating them if they haven't been Celtic for a while. But anyway, look, it doesn't matter. More to the point, we're in a position now where we can become feudal. So I skipped forward a little bit of time here. We needed level 3 noble customs, and that was it. And we were already level, what, like 2 and 3 quarters? So I made sure we were through to that point. So now we can, if we want to, go for feudalism. Why do I think this is a good idea? Well, if we look at the Aztecs, unfortunately, as it stands right now, ooh, is this saint? Okay, Just don't, don't question it. Right, so we've got 21,000 men that we're up against here, and of course anything else that they can hire, or, or bring on board, or spawn with events, or whatever else. Okay, or allies, or I don't know, I don't really know what, what else they could bring on board here. I don't think the Aztecs too well. But, more to the point, we've only got 1,350 men there. Potential allied troops, 17,000. But you've got to remember, we, we have no control over these armies. It's some it's, it's in some way a blessing and a curse. It means we have to do less micromanagement. But unfortunately, this is a war where we would need micromanagement. We're taking lots of naval crossings, lots, lots of naval landings. The AI is famously garbage with boats. So we can't even have them attached to us because we personally don't have enough boats. The AI are going to have to have to use their own boats. I don't know that I trust the AI with a war this major. If we flip to feudal, we get full control of the armies, and it makes us look a bit more threatening, because right now, I don't, I don't know how well the AI takes into account uh, potential vassal ally troops, like tribal troops you can call to war when they declare war on you, or when they consider you a threat. So I would rather us consolidate power a little bit. We're in the position to do so. Why not? Why don't we just do it? Why don't we just flip over? I'm trying to think of a good reason not to. Well, you could say we've got 7,000 prestige, so we could go to war with the Aztecs and summon a whole bunch of tribal spawn troops. Um... What else is their bonus to be in tribal right now? Not a huge amount. Not that I can think of. Obviously, Inspire Warriors fully reinforced that. That's probably not a bad idea, to be honest with you. But we could do that with a couple of different castles, couldn't we? What are we looking at now, then? What, what happens if we fully reinforce our own levy? Oh, we'll have about 3,300 troops. I mean, we could try it. We could try it, and then as a celebration, as a grand celebration for taking back the Celtic lands, flip over to feudal. Might not be a bad idea, because it would mean we'd be able to revoke a lot of titles if we pass... Um, the, whatever it's called, the revocation, the religious revocation, that would allow us to revoke all these titles and dish them out. I mean, it's going to be an invasion in Casas Belli anyway, so in theory, we'd like to grab as much as we can. Even grabbing all of this and making it independent, like the non celtic territories, I think would be kind of cool just to break up the Aztecs a little bit more, remove a lot of this central sort of European power. Let's do it. Okay, so we want to invade France, I guess, seeing as that's their most sizable, or we could go for, like, Brittany and then move over, but we'll go for France. Then we want to take... Essentially everything sort of down here by Italy around around essentially the Alps. We'll, we'll grab as much of Germania as possible, but I'm not too concerned about that. And then of course we do need to get Brittany. That is that is a classically a Celtic land there. So let's do it. Why do I feel like I'm going to regret this? Okay, well the button's pressed now. You can't you can't take it back. No, takes you back. He's right. Raise the troops. Now the issue is we have no boats, as I said. So we're relying fully on the AI to be able to micromanage their own troops and deal with their own boats. I don't think they're capable of doing that. The AI are garbage. They're, they're just goddamn terrible when it comes to moving troops around to any sort of degree, especially naval landings or naval battles or naval anything. The AI very much just sort of bashes their head against a rock until it works. I have been too harsh. To the courtiers at Middlesex, but high chancellor King Thomas managed to calm them down and make them even like me. Ah, oh, how can I ever reward you? 13 gold for the High King of Scotland making our courtiers like us. I think that's a fair trade. That's an amicable deal, my friend. Plus, obviously, become feudal gives us access to a whole bunch of buildings, a whole lot of different tech, uh, some new events as well, ambitions, feasts, hunts, that type of crap. I think we can have hunts already, can't we? Um, my son is becoming even better. I mean, this guy's essentially a base game character with, with, I mean, instead of quick, he's got bright, which is garbage. Uh, consider him just strong and attractive with some of the little bonuses here. He's very, very good. 25 Marshall is obviously fantastic, but like I've said, since, since sort of Holy Fury, oh my god, we don't even have enough boats to take our own armies. Shit. Um, with the addition of Holy Fury, making super, super powerful Marshall characters isn't really, you know, particularly difficult anymore, huh? 
Let's put on those guys. There we go. Okay, so we've got 1,355 men. Even Mountain leading three, oh, 1,300 men is probably going to be pretty devastating to them. We've got Mountain, Slate, and this man, my friend, the High King of Albion. That seems like a pretty good, a pretty good attack force. So ideally, I guess we just want to start sieging down Brittany first, seeing as that is traditional Celtic lands. All we've got to do is get it to 100% war score and we get all of France anyway, because that's the that's the war target. So why not just uh, pray? Just go, just go for it and hope for the best. Hope the Aztecs don't send like 20,000 men specifically for us. Okay, let's pick up these other 400 troops. We've got a couple more coming down here as well. We've got another 800 men. That's not bad. That's a fairly okay army size for us to personally, uh, personally move around. So we could have the AI try and attach to us. I don't know whether it's better to just let them do their own thing. Um, judging by the fact they immediately sent all of their boats down to, like, I mean, the coast of Morocco straight to Gibraltar area. Maybe not. Maybe we should bring them back a little bit, huh? Okay, right. Here's what we're going to do then. My great commanders, although it is a great idea to go halfway across the world where the war isn't being fought right now, could you do me a favor and come back? That would be much appreciated. Change of plan. Let's not go halfway across the world. There we go. Okay, that, sh that should be okay. We'll just have our guy lead everything, because that way it's we're just going to be an unstoppable absolute unit. Obviously, the sieging becomes a little more difficult, but I am concerned about the literally this. This is exactly what I was worried about, is even with our guy with the 30 marshal versus 9,000 men, I don't think he's that strong. I mean, he is that strong. Oh, God, shit. They are doing some quick assaults, huh? Um, probably works well in their favor, because they can just massively outnumber us, and they can probably end this war if we're not super, super fast about things. All right, get rid of these boats, because we can't afford it. We can definitely afford it. Well, we still we just don't want them. Like this is this is a one way trip, right? Okay, so we got mountain slate. You're good. Um, can't use a dragon because of course there are no dragons in the real world. Last time I checked. Okay, I don't know why I even bothered looking for that goddamn button. Okay, so do you want to maybe go and try and get 100% war score first? Oh god, they're even landing people on the the English mainland. Um, right, holy orders. What are you guys thinking me right now? I mean, they've only got. <sighs> Jesus, that's only going to be like 3,000 men. Okay, fine. Merge together. Let's lead this one personally. I, I, I'm not even sure. Oh my god, all things considered, that's still going to be enough. Can we escape that? No, we can't. They're going to get there on the 19th of May. The battle's going to start. Oh, we can escape that. Okay, so let's escape. Let the Aztecs land and sort of crush whatever they got. They are just turning up and assaulting down. Holy shit. Uh, the pitiful state of my daughter, Marble. What is wrong with you? A young Marble was born while I was waiting for the tech points to tick, tick up, which is why we didn't see her. Um, she is Leo, which is fine. Slow, which is absolutely not. Um, no, just let her die. Honestly, give it to the Aztecs. You know, like, uh, like, like mother animals will leave their animal, uh, will leave their animal behind. Will leave their baby behind so predators can eat those. That's what we're doing right now, except instead of predators, it's 9,000 very hungry Aztecs. They might eat young baby. I don't know. Siege of Westminster. They're not pro Jared. Siege of Westminster. <laughs> Allegedly. Oh god, okay. Right, this is what I was kind of hoping they wouldn't do. Did they take- they did take a river crossing though. Okay, turn the speed down. Fingers crossed, good luck. Who would win? 8,000 Aztecs or one angry Irish boy? It turns out the angry Irish boy is fucking destroying them. <gasps> oh my god, that's incredible. He can't be stopped. This was a great idea. Obviously, the UK is, is quite a good site to try and defend. I mean, historically, it's incredible for that as well. So we can just sit here and let them try and attack uh, try and attack Mountain. Just leave behind the sieging force. They don't really need a commander leading them. In fact, we'll, we'll put that guy on the... There you go, this guy. Put that guy on the center. We need the best, best of our commanders on this one. Uh, which we already do. Okay, right, that's fine. So we'll put the other guy back on the center for this one. So you two swap out. There we go. And we'll put you on there. And then if we've got anyone else not leading troops, there we go. You can you can have that one. Okay, right. Let's, um, minus 42% war score. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, oh, God, this is horrible. It's fine. Honestly, should have probably gone for feudal in hindsight. I, I did talk myself out of it because I thought this would be fun. Hang on. Raise tribal armies. Um, uh, yes, I will be doing that. Thank you. What's the, what does the button do? Uh, how many troops are you going to give me, though? Just says a tribal army is called to you. Oh, it's garbage. Oh, good. It's absolute garbage. I was kind of hoping for more than that. Normally, it says a non-reinforcing regiment of X amount of men, but this this time it just summoned them in, huh? Okay. Um, so, let's get 8,000 men. You guys quickly run to Suffolk, Cradle of Civilization. Actually, no, they've stopped. Okay. Uh, no, don't join me in my chambers for anything unless it's um, cowering in fear from the very angry Aztecs, which we may have poked the bear on this one. Maybe we should have waited. Right, let's bring these... Sorry? Minus 58 gold. How much are these people costing me? Oh. 60 gold per month. If I'd have known that, wouldn't have hired them. What the fuck do you mean 60 gold per month for 8,000 8, troops? Good God. Okay. Um, I will admit this may be problematic. 
They are sieging our capital right now. Uh, okay. It's fine. There's nothing to worry about. Quickly attach over here. This is okay. It's, de it's definitely no concern. Quickly attach over here. Bring your boats back. Um, you know when I said we didn't know those boats anymore? This is a one-way trip. I lied. It was actually a return trip. We're going back. Uh, you, you guys come down here and pick my friends up. Thank you. Uh, I guess we'll just leave Mountain there. Because I imagine he could probably solo those 20,000 angry hours. They're leaving? Why are they leaving? What do you have What do you have planned, dirty Aztecs? Uh, that's not racist. It's just, uh, you know, that's probably what he's saying. He, he's the racist, not me. I'm speaking for him. Right, okay. Get. Uh, let's, let's merge these together. Let's get you guys on the boats. Avoided a PewDiePie situation there, huh? Right, move move you guys up. Oh, God. Uh, move to Sussex. Move to Sussex. At that point, the boats may be able to... They gave up their lives to, to slow the Aztecs down for their king. You will not be forgotten, random peasants. I appreciate you. Okay. I'm thinking this is winnable. This is definitely winnable. I'm saying that as a joke, but it may be winnable. It is winnable. Troublesome peasants. No. Okay, no, we've lost the center. Oh, shit. Uh, we, we maimed the commander, though. Yeah, this was a bad plan. Okay, so... In conclusion, the AI did exactly what I thought they would, and they've they've sent troops to everywhere besides where we actually need them right now. Okay, can we... Oh, what about White Peace? No? Uh, maybe we should have just gone feudal, huh? I like the way you're thinking. What do we lose? We lose 300 prestige and 488 gold. Nah, so that's a minor cost, I'd say. Okay, that was a good test. Back to the drawing board. We've got unlimited... I would be very pissed off if we didn't have unlimited use of the invasion. But the fact that we can just do it again in five minutes is not really much of a concern. That was a good trial. I don't like that it doesn't tell you how many tribal troops you get anymore. Because I thought that used to scale up. The fact that we only got a thousand. I swear it used to be maybe pre-Holy Fury. That you would raise an amount relative to like the size of your, your, your empire or your kingdom or whatever. Anyway... We're going to flip to feudal. You know I said this would be a celebration. It's a celebration of us uh, moving on to bigger and better things. Oh, we become a theocracy. Oh, are we going to get a game over? No, we've just got a theocratic... Oh, that's kind of cool. I mean, it says that... Oh, hereditary theocracy. Oh, hang on. This government represents a blending of church and state functions. Much like a standard feudal system, it brings the temples and churches under the rulers. We can hold... We can hold temples. Castle, temple, fort... And... So that's really good for tech points. Oh, wow. Okay, that's very interesting. Can hold village holdings without penalty. So those are tribes. Uh, can build castle, city, temple, fort, and hospital holdings. Can call tribal government vassals to arms instead of using liege levies. Okay. I mean, they should start flipping over to feudal. Generally, th generally that's what will happen if, if they are capable of doing so. If we are, they can also join us. Can revoke titles from tribal government vassals of another religion without objections from other vassals. I mean, that's good because... Oh, are any of these guys tribal? I mean, I guess not, because this would have been Carolingian at some point, huh? Okay, then. Sure. That's that's something, I guess. Um, we do need to rearrange cancel. Hey, do you want to collect some taxes? Not that we're in debt or anything. It's just I very desperately need money for, for reasons. Um, what about the conversion? How's the religion going? Okay, so we managed to get a little bit more. Uh, it, it's unfortunately, there's still a little bit of old Kelsey kicking around, which is, is not really our highest priority. I'd like to get rid of a lot of this chastled only. What is that? Lollard as well? Very weird. Okay, um... You're proselytizing the capital. I think we should probably just leave you there in that case. That seems okay to me. On the plus side, we can have an imperial coronation now when we get enough gold. So that's also pretty good because it will cancel out the... So Hemoarch is what, like a minus 15 feudal vassal opinion? But if we get coronated, then it will cancel out. So that's, that's only the, the only downside I could really think of becoming feudal. The ch buildings Chief Boris was looking to reinforce should be torn down and replaced with sturdier houses. Sure, why the hell not? Okay, so shall we flip to maybe business focus for a while to try and maybe um, get rid of some of this debt? We are now grievously scarred, which gives us all those great bonuses, and then, yeah, that's fine. So that, that's sort of your base game uh, CK2 one there. A lot of people were pointing out that the CK2 plus scar trait gave you a lower health or something like that. Um, although there was a chance of getting a lower health. It was like an event that was like 50% chance of getting 0 0.5 health, which is probably what killed off, was it our, our mother? Or something like that. Whoever it was we were playing as who died a natural death who was very good. That was most likely the reason was whenever they were scarred, when they were getting wounded, it was actually knocking off a permanent 0 0.5 health. So it wasn't that fantastic. Um, ideally, we'd prefer wounded because obviously then you can't get that stacking scar penalty. Marshall, Slate, why do you hate me? Outraged by succession law change, minus 350. Ah, because we're now feudal, I assume. So we've got Agnatic Tanistrick. What? You're still my heir, my son. My son, what is your concern? I don't understand. Oh, probably because we've, uh... No, he's definitely both of our heirs. No tight lockers on succession. I don't know what he's complaining about. Just usual slate stuff. So I think we wait a while then. Get ourselves coronated. Oh, okay. So the Emperor's coming to visit our realm. Of course, the Emperor is more than welcome. As long as he brings with him many, many riches and gold. Speaking of which, let's get a Chinese artifact. Thank you. Should have maybe also gone for a scholar bureaucrat or something along those lines. Right, so what's he sent us this time? Um... 
I honestly don't know. Oh, Die Treaties on Law. I'm pretty sure we already had that one. Die Sculpture? I don't think we had that, and that's build time minus 5%. So you know what? I'll take that. Thank you, Jonah. We don't have the Dragon Amulet, which we should probably go on a heist. And maybe try and find one of those, because now that we're feudal, we want to be building ourselves up as much as possible. That's the bonus of being feudal, huh? Um, so let's go Dragon Amulet. We want to go Diplo Ranger. Yes, and let's sort by the lowest rank. Um, who needs to be landed? So this guy. Th Theormir. That'll do. Okay, uh, so steal artifacts. We want to go for your dragon amulet. He's got it equipped. I don't know if that affects, his, uh, affects the chance to be able to steal it. I'm sure it wouldn't matter anyway because we've got this guy trying to steal it. We'll bring Slate along as well. So we're going to go for a full march. We're just going to kick the doors and kill all the guards and steal it before he even knows what's happened. Uh, court chaplain, welcome aboard yet another court chaplain. Someone's mysteriously killing them off. I wonder why. You've arrived at Legatus Thormir of Thrix capital. As expected, it's heavily guarded. We can force away inside 85% uh, chance of success. Thank you. Oh, I never knew talking about the weather could be so fruitful. Sure, we're making friends with the Chinese diplomat there because it's everybody knows the weather in the UK is just uh, just great all the time. You managed to evade most patrols when you come outside the treasury. 90% chance of success. We're just going to swashbuckle it. There we go. You've dealt with the guards in your food search treasury of your target. Time is short and the treasury is filled with documents, jewels, and other miscellaneous items. So this one is administrative capabilities and scholarly knowledge. We've got to remember, we do have 21 and 25 stewardship and learning respectively there. Split to cover more ground. 73%. Uh, that was actually better. I guess because uh, Slate is also slightly good at those things. Oh, you know what? It's actually more likely that Slate's so, literally so stupid that telling him to go away is more effective here. And that does make sense. Hey, there we go. Shit. Nice. You were, a, you were a good priest to bring on board. Wow, that took him no time at all, huh? That We need to be very careful about the religious conversion because obviously that will give us, you know, more troops and things like that. Less, less unrest, less modifiers that will lower our troop count. There's, there's a lot of reason to go for a full conversion here. After making your escape, you finally feel relieved. You managed to steal one fine artifact and your foe has no idea. That went better than I thought. Absolutely it did, because now, my friends, we are in a great situation. So that's going to give us... Let's take a look here. Dragon Amulet is Vassal Opinion plus 5 to cancel out a little bit of the Hemoarch. Stewardship plus 1, build cost minus 10%. It's fantastic, especially when you've got no gold. Well, this is quite a cool event. You've always enjoyed a cadre of personal guards to protect your person, but recently this man has proven his loyalty and determination. So that gives us uh, Imperial Bodyguards for... Five years time, even plot discovery chance plus 10% and plot power defense plus 50%. We've got a nice loyal guy kicking around our court. Can we give him like a, an honorary title or something? Oh, we've already have. Oh, he's caught, he's caught educated. Okay, sure, that's fine. We do have a, a bodyguard option in this, right? Um, but I don't know what the hell these are. Strong armed retainers. I guess that's basically close enough, huh? Um, so we're going to start with the Frankish Knights, so they're equipped with horses. Uh... Oh, the Frankish knights are equipped with horses. I see. I was going to say that didn't make much sense. My liege, as you know, I am those are the vassals of Fort Fashion, blah, blah, blah. Thank you for the gold. Much appreciated. I don't know if they actually sent us any gold there. I'm pretty sure they didn't. Let's accept this guy's challenge and hopefully kill him dead. What sort of weakling are you? When can we rank up? Because I feel like we're very, very close. And ideally, forging another society bloodline with this guy would really, really set us up for future generations when we're not going to have this absolute powerhouse of a character leading us. Thomas will court of glory choose military aspect. Those were all obviously very good. Building up the Legend Bar would be fantastic. We have 2,000 right now. We're, we're almost there. We're going to get that in no time at all because we're getting, what, 25 per month? We can also duel this guy for honor. Carton, let's see what you've got for me. A sparring match, huh? Of course we were going to win that. He didn't stand a goddamn chance. And that would do it. Thank you. Okay. A duel. That is what I'm saying. And, of course, we, we managed it first time there. Thank you. Are we not head of the guild? That seems pretty ridiculous if you wouldn't let us be the, be the head of things. So, Terminate Call to Glory, choose military aspect. We have to be the actual leader of the of the, of the the society, right? We're next in line. We've just got to wait for this guy to die off of natural causes. And unfortunately... Oh, there it is. Ordinary gathering. Oh, no, we can just do it. Okay, sorry. I, I didn't think we needed to kill you off, seeing as it's, uh, it's the same rank as us. After the duel, Carton of Vassmanland asked, me, asked for advice on fighting. A little taken back. I happily offered to train with him. Again? Why not, brother? There we go. We became friends with the man that we maimed. That's that's nice. That seems to be exactly on brand for Archdruid Mountain, the Soul Flayer. And now we can do it. Unlocks the Society Legend Progress Bar. Sweet. Okay, so I don't know if we'll have it finished by the end of today, because, of course, this, this thing generally takes quite a while. It's got to be very diligent about making sure the mission's done pretty much immediately, huh? Um, and then, I don't really know many of the bloodlines, because I think, as I get older and older, my body will not just stop this incessant growth. My skin is getting thicker, my voice is becoming deeper, my limbs hurt, and I have a headache that would just not go away. While my immense stature is more imposing than ever, I feel my spirit slowly leaving my body. What? What, because he's tall? You don't, just, you don't just keep growing if you're tall. This is literal giganticism. Yeah, there it is. Escalating gigantism. Giving the following effects, health minus one. This is, this is not the same as just being tall. You don't just keep growing at the age of 52, my friend. 
Uh, do we not have a daughter who was actually a, a actually had giant giantism or something like that? Yeah, there we go. So I think we're supposed to have this trait, aren't we? But obviously something's uh, something's got a little bit crossed there. Whenever I go out, all eyes are upon me. One woman in particular stands out. She's stunningly beautiful. This lady here. Um, sure. Join me in my chambers for some be beer. Oh, because we're civilized now, of course. Yeah, we stopped drinking air. We're now, we're now moved completely onto beer. Let's, uh, we could take her as a concubine. Oh, we can't take her as a concubine. We already have three concubines. Uh, she's 26. She is, uh, 24. And she's 28. I mean, they're all okay. What about a wife? She's 60, but we have also been married to her for, for many, many years. I think that'd be incredibly rude kicking her out so that we can marry uh, so we can marry this other woman we just fell in love with. We'll take her as... Oh, in fact, we have two... Oh, I forgot about Geberga the Mona. Of course. Of course it is. And at long last, we've finally got enough gold to go for our Imperial Coronation. I already rule the Kingdom of the Celtic Empire, but receiving an official, that word, Coronation, will legitimize my standing to my vassals. Now it's time to begin planning what is sure to be a lavish ceremony attended by all. Someone will do it in my name. Oh, so someone's going to... He's going to crown himself. Someone's going to crown him in the name of him because he is the head of his own religion. Thank you. Lose 10 gold. Okay, that's going to save us a little bit of money, huh? Gain 100 prestige. Gain 50 party. All invitations are sent, of course. It's a shame that we can't crown ourselves. That would have been pretty good. Um, He already has commitments. What? I've been able to make the journey to Middlesex. How dare you? What do you mean? I'm afraid I must decline. Oh, because he's, he's a, a heretic. Can we ask him to convert? Um, request, attempt religious conversion. Um, we have to not be busy. Oh, and he's zealous too. Okay, fine. Um, obviously people are going to say no. Like, like the old Celtic vassals are, are most likely going to say no. A lot of people are just not interested. What do you mean? Uh, probably because they are, I assume, tribal then? I, Mountain of the Morbid Dynasty, and with the blessings of Lud, do hereby rightfully assume the crown of the Celtic Empire. With those words, does he become king of the Celtic Empire in truth, or emperor, if you will, with each of his vassals lining up to bow before him, except for all of the people who didn't turn up. I'm a bit more proud. We gain crowned, 50% uh, chance of getting humble. Oh, 50% chance of losing humble, becoming proud. Okay, yeah, because he's never been more proud. The mood of the tradition faction has improved and imperial decadence reduced by one. But if we go to the tradition faction anyway, or any faction, you can see they're kind of on our side. They do kind of like us a lot. So if there was ever a civil war, we've got nothing to worry about. I've never been more proud. Imperial decadence is now zero. Sweet. So that's a mechanic added by CK2+. I've talked about it before, but it's also in like HIP, I believe. It's also in When the World Stop Making Sense. That as the empire gets bigger and more difficult to manage, as there's lots of succession and things like that, you get decadence, which gives you uh, malices. We've got nothing to worry about in that regard, though. Uh, so what does crown give? Just diplomacy. Oh, diplomacy plus two is quite nice. Church opinion plus ten. Vassal opinion plus ten is, is fantastic. Let the festivities commence. This guy did not like my 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 feast. A, a servant set him off. He was dancing on the tables, of course. Um, we're going to fall in love with... Let's just collect them all. Pokemon. I don't know why it made us save up all that 171 gold if we didn't actually have to spend it on the feast or the coronation or anything. So we might as well invest it straight into our castles, which was is pretty garbage. Why can we still build stone hill forts? Um, I don't understand. Oh, wow. Basic keep, stone keep. Oh, so that isn't actually the tribal building. That's added by something else. There are, there are a lot of buildings. We've got quite a hefty amount of buildings to concern ourselves with here. Um, let's go for, I don't know, whatever's going to give us tax, I guess, to start off with. So we go for the poor district. Get the poor people in so they can pay tax. We don't need to build anything else for now. Um, and we'll, we'll focus on our economy. Oh, no, we also have the trade post, don't we, in Middlesex, which is quite a powerful one because it's in the middle of, uh, cover your eyes if you're, if you're easily, you know, vomit-induced because this is, uh, this is something, huh? This is particularly neon. It's like we've dropped some E's and gone to a rave. What have we got? Um, excuse me, I want to... What was I looking at? Oh, I remember. <laughs> so hang on a minute. So we're in the middle of obviously quite a powerful trade route there. So British trade city tax plus 22.5%, castle tax, etc, etc. And we're on the Atlantic trade. Field of Skulls. Oh, that's also something. Um, we should probably not do that great sacrifice anymore because that's another four years. Holy shit. Tax modified down by 10%. Levy reinforcement rate down by 20%. Okay, let, let's try and avoid doing that. This is just horrible, huh? My god, I suppose it does contrast well against the map, which is probably why they've done it. But there are some uh, pretty hefty trade routes. CK2 Plus is pretty good because it adds that extra sort of layer of, of planning and difficulty in the fact that you can, certain provinces are more valuable. Because in the base game, what do you have? You just have like the Silk Road that literally runs like through India up to Constantinople and that's it. Or like the gold uh, routes through Mali and places like that. But in, in this one, you might want to take Oxford because it's got that trade post. And there are actually shit to build there as well. It's not just like, oh, I'll build a, a garrison giving me retinue size. Okay, so what do we actually want to build then? Anything that gives a significant amount of gold. Um, any tax income buildings would obviously be fantastic because we're not too concerned about the trade value, seeing as I don't particularly plan on going for, for you know, embargo wars or anything like that. That one's not bad. Like, wine merchant gets a lot of uh, varying bonuses there. 
Um, there's not a huge amount, I'll be completely honest with you. What's camp give? Trade pal value? Bank? I assume higher levels of banks. Oh, you can just build a bank. An immense bank combined with an impenetrable fort does not either give us gold, nor does it give us any fort level. Fantastic. Um, how much gold does that actually bring in realistically? Oh, it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. It's more than the majority of our domain, but I think I'd rather just keep the money and actually upgrade our capital. Dirt track also seems pretty good. Tax income plus one. We've got tax modifiers. Tax spread rate would be fantastic, seeing as most of the UK is travel right now. Such a dirty mind, Burkill. Come then, let's commit a few sins. Uh, husband's dead. It's, it's okay, good, fine. Burkill will be unfaithful. She obviously is, is uh, clearly quite experienced in this type of thing. Uh, how are we doing right now? We've got four lovers. This is a, I like this new task. You know what? He's bored of all his conquests. He's gone into new ones instead. Dirt track has been built in Westminster. Sounds like not the only dirt track. That, I can't say that. I can't say that. Move on. We're going to get demonetized. A daughter was born to Prince Slate of the Celtic Empire and Princess Fina of the Celtic Empire named A Rock. Obviously, we just chucked the K on the end there and that was good. She's a good character. Bright, strong, attractive. Capricorn. The inbreeding. I mean, the inbreeding is obviously going pretty well, but but the genetic breeding that we've done over the past few generations, it's really starting to pay off. I mean, every generation has just fantastic, fantastic uh, sort of congenital traits here. That's good. A rock, welcome. And what's this one? Capricorn? Marshall plus one. Yeah, I mean, the, the astrology, somebody points out in the comment that the astrology is, is fairly garbage. I do agree that the traits themselves are shit. The fact that it gives you access to the Hermetic Society, though, makes it a very, very powerful boon, in my opinion. Because if you write enough magnum opuses, you're, you're unstoppable. I mean, you write four or five generations worth of magnum opuses when you have a high enough learning to, to equip them all. The amount of bonuses you get out of that is just disgusting. On top of the other stuff, the uh, Hermetic Society gives, like, if you if you build yourself a gun or invent anything. You know, the, what is the other one? The um, Is it a blast furnace you can build? I don't remember. But either way, they're all incredibly good good uh you will obviously be trained in struggle such as such as the way of the, the rocks and the pebbles and the everything else welcome a rock a rock nick slate that's so good oh a daughter as well hello uh little team air can i rename her because that's garbage or we're gonna piss off our wife i'm pretty sure she's not oh i was gonna say she hates us anyway oh god just broken my 61 year old wife's heart oh well um what is she aquarius she's not mine i don't even know who she is mortar is mad at me um but our wife is fine. I've never seen this child before in my life. I mean, obviously not, because it's just been born. What a stupid thing to say. I'm getting worried about the Aztecs, because they are currently, if we go over to the Aztec Empire, they did just grab part of Bavaria, um, which is, which is like, here somewhere, right? They did just launch a big invasion on that one. I, I would like to see their truces, but who is it there against the German Empire? Oh. Oh, the German Empire is, is completely gone now, huh? Um, I, th I believe it was Bavaria that they just took. Let's take a look. Where is it? It's like somewhere around here, right? It doesn't matter too much. The more to the point, they are extremely powerful now. The German Empire is gone, completely got replaced by Aztecs. So now these are a gigantic homogenous block that we've got to try and cut our way through. Luckily, they have less troops because I guess their previous ruler was a better martial commander. No, they're both garbage. What did he die in? Uh, personal combat, slain by Sophia. Ah, of course. All it took was a 62-year-old Norse woman to do what our character was not, and that was stop the Aztecs. The point is, they're going to have a lot of very easy-to-grab states now, because they've got, like, Saxony, they've got a lot of single-border counties there. I'd like to see their history, but I don't know how we're supposed to find the title of the German Empire now it's gone. Um, right, if we go history here, here we are. Right, there we go, the German Empire. Uh, does anybody still hold it? No, it is just straight-up destroyed. Yep, this guy inherited it, and then it is, uh, it's gone. He's now in hiding. I wanted to see their truces, see what they actually did grab there, but that's, uh... It's getting a bit concerning, and I don't think the Roman Empire will even do anything to stop them either. Let's take a look at Rome just very quickly. My leaders, people of Wurzburg has progressed beyond our own technological levels. Thank you very much. Uh, Emperor Clementinius the Lion. Okay, what are you like? You are territorial leader and ranger leader, so he's a good military commander. He's an insanely good military commander. Good God. Um, pro decadence is 20 to 30. Rome has been around for so long, and without Julius Nepos at the helm, they are going to start to fall apart very soon. Morale of armies minus 20%. They got tax modified down by 20%. The levy size has been crippled, both maximum and minimum. This guy is the only reason I think he can help keep things together and repel the Aztecs because of his own personal combat, which is insane. What about his heir? Is a Caesar Liberius here when he comes into power? They are super screwed. Because this guy is not going to have access to 141,000 men. He's also not going to be able to keep the rams together as good as this guy who is, you know, just brave, patient, diligent, ambitious. He's got so much going for him. I feel like we very much rushed into that war with the Aztecs. So I think maybe spending a little bit of time just basically building things up. Building up a lot of gold so that we can get mercenaries if we... I still have troops raised there. So that we can get ourselves into the position where we take these guys out decisively. Another setback like that, even though it wasn't a, a big deal. because It basically just cost us gold for the attempt. It, it will 
I mean, not stopping the Aztecs is the problem, right? Us taking or, or losing and costing us the gold, it doesn't matter because we can launch unlimited invasions. But it means that these guys are still left unchecked because, like I said, I don't think Rome is going to be able to stop them, especially after their current emperor dies. So... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> You can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> Is that because of the fucking gigantism? He's 55. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. Why not? Fuck it. We're in. We're in. Fuck it. I hate this game. We're leaving it there. I can't. I, I absolutely need to, to stop playing right now. Thank you for watching. This fucking game does my goddamn head in. A big shout out to the insane top tier level patrons. Thank you to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Blaniel, Blurry Bunny, Sidini, Conspire T, Crazy Pat, Croesus, Danny Good, Donald, Eric B, Escape, Facundo Vasquez, Fungus King, Gogolus, Harik, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Lindeen, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Muller, Muskratful, Nathan Flores, Necrofilm, Pelvis Presley, Surfle the Sweet, Sorogon, Toby Cruz, Tom Terror 18, Tyler Kendall, Vacuous Backus, and Zazzy. 7011. Thank you for your support at the insane tier levels on Patreon. And of course, a thank you as well to Asaro, Adam Person, Akari, Andrew Wilson, Arachno44, Betamus Max, Sedini, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Connie 2 and 7, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, GDWK Run, Genji Zerka, Grey, Haji Demar, Hancock, Aaron McGowan, Icy the Great, Israel, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Yoran DeVries, Jessica Smith, John Holiday, Johnny No, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Plot, Justin Walters, Lemon Stark, Llewellyn Thomas, Matthew, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Nixie, Pants, Hammy, Pantherpool, Smirtworm, The Insane Pickle, Venom Meow, Will Wade, Wolfie, Zico. Who do I need to talk to at Paradox to stop this from happening? Who has cursed my game? They can't... I... Thank you for watching.